Okay, this is Jeff Head with Jeff Head's YouTube channel. This is the third video of a class of videos uh, that I'm doing showing the uh, building of the Asahi, the Asahi uh, class destroyer, which is their latest. Uh, they were built on pretty much the same hull as the Murasami, which they built nine of, the Takanami, which they built five of, the Akazuki, which they built four of, and now uh, th this class, Asahi. And uh, if you'll look, it's got its own, what uh, has been called now the uh, Japanese Aegis, because they have their own dual band radar APARs up on the main bridge. These ships are about 6,800 tons full replacement. Uh, they're a fairly stealthy lot in terms of all the angling that's been done. Uh, they have very strong uh, ship-wide defensive systems uh, and uh, offensive systems as well. These particular uh, destroyers, these last uh, six destroyers, the Akazuki and the Asahi, uh, were built to escort uh, their larger Aegis destroyers, and particularly when they're operating in a uh, ballistic missile defense role. Up front you see they have a 32 cell MK-41 launcher and uh, they can and will uh, locate 128 improved Sea Sparrow missiles in there evolved Sea Sparrow missiles that are very, very good defensive missiles uh, to both high-flying supersonic and low-flying subsonic uh, anti-shipping missiles. And uh, they use them to protect larger ones, and the larger ones are being used to protect their aircraft carriers. Uh, these last two, and this one that I'm building is the last of the series. It's uh, number 20. Uh, DD-20, uh, the Sharuni, I believe is what it's called, uh, but this is a, a series of videos I produced with it. This is the uh, third video showing me building it. Uh, what I lack still is the full array of um, <clears throat> Uh, metal parts that they have, almost 200 of, uh, all of them uh, custom cut uh, for their specific area, so they just fit into the area where they belong, and they do a wonderful job. If you'll look up number one and number two, in the first one, I uh, compare it to the Akazuki, uh, which was first built of that class and uh, and I showed the entire ship after I had built it but these fit together very nicely and are very very capable of producing a uh, really a, a, a nice historical model uh, a very very good fit for all the, the, the parts and it's a resin model with metal and with uh, uh, and these parts as well, which of course are not full metal, but they are uh, really, really nice when it comes to the APARs and the various instrumentation and of course all of the uh, railing. And the railing is uh, cut to fit and that's really, really nice, I have to tell you. So there will be one more of these uh, videos that will have all of that metal on there and then I will show it. We'll have a separate uh, video uh, playlist for it that you can look at. You can look at it, you can see the, the, uh, the helicopter there and there's also a fire scout helicopter, uh, unmanned, uh, but very uh, well-built 
uh, that the U.S. Navy uses a lot too. And as you can see, a lot of uh, new detailed parts have been added uh, to this particular ship. Let me move this back so that we don't have it getting in the way. I've got the uh, China, uh, the Japanese uh, war jack up there. If you look over the uh, on top of the helicopter landing area and particularly on top of the uh, helicopter uh, housing there you can see all the cameras that have been put up there as well as elsewhere they, they have a lot of of cameras you can see on this side three or four here and three or four over yonder on that part up here towards the front you can also see um, the various uh, video surveillance uh, units there and also up on top there we've got most of the decals on now there's the 120 you can see the warning decals around the missile launcher You've got the full, uh, full metal pieces on there for the uh, chain and the um, anchors. Both anchors are on. Both are attached to their chains and ready to come down whenever they need to. You can see the really large bow-mounted sonar they have. This particular ship, the first four were were built specifically for anti-aircraft uh, defense. Uh, this, these two ships have the same anti-air defense, but they've got them all up front, whereas the first four had a little higher section back here on the hangar that had the uh, other two APARs in the back sticking up a little higher. This one doesn't have that, but this one does have additional uh, anti-submarine warfare and a little stronger software and uh, hardware functioning for that. Uh, so for each carrier group, one of these and a, either a, a Takanami or a Murasami uh, ship would be really a nice, strong addition to the group. So there you have it. Uh, the uh, helicopters, uh, Japanese maritime self-defense uh, SH-60, and uh, they've also got a fire scout that goes with it, like I said. And you can see all the detailed pieces that have been put on since the last uh, build that we did for this ship. Also added some... Uh, rigging and lines there on the main mast you know for flags and messaging it's just a very very well done ship it, it all fits together so nicely and it's got a really really nice feel to it it's it's a heavy model and the uh, resin makes that the case it also has uh, and I'll probably try to put a gun in each of those places but it's got a bunch of 50 caliber and uh, 50 caliber auto fire uh, places you can also see the shaft uh, launchers on either side of the ship there more of these 50 caliber machine gun uh, those are of course to take on swarming small vessels at any range. And then in addition to that, they've got, of course, eight uh, anti-shipping missiles of uh, long range and the newest Japanese uh, model of that. So you can see that a lot of work has been done since the last one. I would urge anyone to watch all three and you can see how the model has developed and parts added as we have gone along. 
and uh, we've got one more to do and in that one we'll we'll add all of the the metal parts from over here as well as some others that are still in the box uh, to finalize uh, the ship and when it's done it will be a really really nice vessel and uh, with all of its railing and all of its uh, metal instrumentation and equipment it will look really really good so wait for that here in the next couple of weeks we'll put that out and we'll have all four of the building of uh, the uh, newest class of Japanese destroyers 6800 tons full load and uh, nice 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 lines on the ship and uh, very well built for uh, the angles that allow the radar to bounce off at different angles and not make it back to the ship that sent them out. So the Japanese do a very good job. They're, they're squared away. And uh, it's a good thing that we have them as allies. And uh, they have a very specific role to play in anti-submarine warfare in the Western Pacific. And uh, we play our role together with them. Our large carriers carry an air wing and a lot of anti-submarine warfare aircraft, both helicopters and fixed wing aircraft, to find and prosecute enemy submarines. So there you have it. DD-120, it was uh, completed in October of 1919, and I believe November or December it was uh, commissioned into the fleet. So these ships, which are very near to um, <clears throat> Aegis vessels themselves, the uh, Japanese now have about 18 of them. And uh, they've got, have finished the latest two Otega class, large, like Flight 2A, uh, but uh, larger yet than that. And then the four uh, Flight 2 uh, Congo class ships that they have, they've got now 18 uh, plus uh, 8. So they've got 24 very strong Aegis class vessels and they've got four very strong uh, aircraft carriers that two of which have been designed and are now carrying uh, F-35B aircraft. The United States worked the deal with through Trump with Abe and the United States is now selling those aircraft to Japan. Japan uh, is building up to keep pace with China. They've got four carriers, two of which are designed specifically for aircraft, fixed wing aircraft, and the F-35 is more than a match for the J-15 uh, that they carry. Hence the plan is looking for a fifth generation short or vertical takeoff and landing aircraft for their carriers. I'm sure, however, if they build another or two carriers, which they have indicated they will, that the Japanese will quickly build two even larger carriers. They've got the design ready. And whereas the uh, <clears throat> uh, Izimu class, the larger carriers that they have, can carry up to 30 F-35s, 35 35Bs, uh, the larger one is said to be able to carry 36 to 42 F-35Bs. And that will be very difficult for China to deal with, uh, particularly since their submarine warfare, uh, in, in, meaning their attack submarines, they don't have strong nuclear class. There are probably three generations behind the United States in that area. And the Japanese have excellent 
uh, submarines as well that are diesel powered but uh, are air independent propulsion so they can stay under a long time they're uh, they've got a lot of staying power and and very decent speed underwater so they can uh, fill the role of protecting their major combatants uh, when they need to and of course China is rapidly trying to uh, build up their submarines to match but when the United States has uh, dozens and dozens of uh, Los Angeles class nuclear submarines that have been steadily upgraded through the years and uh, also have a couple of Seawolf class submarines in the Western Pacific and now uh, a couple of dozen Virginia class submarines in the West Western Pacific, which is the latest class the United States has, uh, the Chinese are in a difficult quandary. They've got decent carriers, and they've got decent aircraft uh, to man them with. Uh, there's, there's no uh, American commander of a U.S. carrier or carrier group that would take that for granted. But there are some very definitive areas where the U.S. has advantages that they can use uh, to their, uh, you know, to their good. And I expect with the Koreans putting the aircraft, the F-35Bs, on their uh, two carriers and, and talking about building two more with the Indians, talking about doing the same with their three, car three carriers, and the Australians talking about doing the same with their two carriers, and the United States having, you know, four or five nuclear carriers at any one time available to the Western Pacific and... Uh, four of the either uh, America class, the new uh, LHA vessels that are 45,000 ton displacement and can carry, you know, upwards of 30 F-35s in the United States has been converting those to carry F-35Bs and has or plans to have four of them ready for the Western Pacific. So you are looking at an alliance of a number of countries that can put uh, many, many carriers, a couple of dozen carriers out uh, with complete battle groups around them, uh, with stronger aircraft, with very, very powerful uh, anti-air warning uh, aircraft uh, that are very powerful and uh, compared to the helicopters that the, uh, that the Chinese are using. So, that'll be interesting to watch. This particular um, vessel is a, is a beautiful vessel, I think. And it's also a very powerful vessel. And the Japanese have done a, an excellent job in and outfitting their carrier escorts and then putting them together. And they've worked with the United States for many, many years. So they know how they work together and they fit together. And they are ready to take up the mantle somewhat on their own uh, in the Western Pacific. And uh, uh, not just be there for anti-submarine warfare, but to have their own carriers there uh, to take the you know, the, the major fighting uh, to whomever the enemy is at the time. And uh, I wanted to show this uh, Japanese DD-25 class uh, destroyer as it comes together. If you look at the others, you can see it as it's built. And I've got one more to do. And I thank you for watching and uh, hope you have a great, great day and a great April. We're, of course, as you, many people in the world are fighting the COVID-19 uh, virus. And uh, everybody just be careful out there. Keep your distancing and uh, we'll all get through it, hopefully safely. Thanks again for watching and uh, feel free to subscribe and get your friends to do the same. 
This is Jeff Head on the Jeff Head uh, YouTube channel. Thank you.